Jamaican subscriber Ashley P sent me this book of Jamaican patois poems by Louise Bennett. Here's a poem about a time a circus came to Kingston and a lion escaped from its cage. What a magic, what a mystery. Circus lion boss him bound and the crowd don't get excited and the crowd is safe and sound. Jamaica people grant me child, Jamaica people ball. For face the king of beasts with everything under control. The lion bust the cage door down, the lion jumped the wall. And not a soul done holler out and not a soul done ball. The lion mingle with the crowd and prowl from west to east. The people sitting calmly and salute the king of beasts. I love patois. It's time to learn geography now! Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbs, Jamaica. Probably the most iconic Caribbean nation to ever hit international mainstream pop culture. So many things to talk about, let's just jump in. Ah, back in the Caribbean. Don't you just love this region of the planet? First of all, Jamaica is the fourth largest island country in the Caribbean, located west of Haiti, south of Cuba, and east of the Cayman Islands, where all the billionaires hide those wonderfully offshore bank accounts to avoid taxes. Jamaica is divided into 14 parishes in the capital Kingston, in itself acting as a parish. The parishes are further kind of split into three historic counties that don't have any administrative relevance. They are Cornwall, Middlesex, and Surrey. Yeah, with names like that, you can almost smell the British residue. The largest cities after the capital Kingston would be Spanish Town and Portsmore, both in the St. Catherine Parish. However, if we're talking about outside the general Kingston area, the next largest would be Montego Bay and Mandeville with the three busiest and only international airports being Kingston, Norman Manley International, Montego Bay's Sangster International, and Bosco Bell's Ian Fleming International. There was some controversy over naming that last airport because everybody was like, why don't we name it after a Jamaican person? But Prime Minister Golding was like, look, the dude kind of put Jamaica on the map and if it wasn't for us, he wouldn't have had the inspiration to create James Bond, so suck it up, people. Now, despite being small, Jamaica still holds its ground on the disputed territory between them and Colombia, Nicaragua, and the U.S. over the uninhabited submerged reef sandbank areas of Bajo Nuevo and the Serenia Bank. Remember people, the second you discover even the smallest sandbank protruding from the sea, you gotta claim it. That way you get an exclusive economic zone. Woohoo! Speaking of which, the country has about 30 smaller islands and islets and keys and sandbanks lining their shores. The largest one being Great Goat Island in the south across Moore's Pen. Now the one thing you need to know about Jamaica and its charm is that if you come, you will notice some of the strangest place names imaginable. Each town has a little bit of a story and context. So you'll encounter things like Broke Neck Gully, Rat Trap, Betty's Hope, Rest and Be Thankful, Old Woman Savannah, See Me No More, Time and Patience, Wait a Bit, and my personal favorite, Me No Sen, You No Come. Jamaicans just like to call it as they see it. Simple, no need to overcomplicate. Hmm, what should we call this place? Drop Sandwich Lagoon. Another interesting thing is that Jamaica has maroon villages, which are inhabited by people descended from slaves that escaped and created their own free societies in the mountains. These villages would eventually play a strong role in Jamaica's history and in a future episode, Sierra Leone, but you'll just have to wait like 47 years for that episode. Today, they kind of hold like a slight autonomous and separate role from the rest of Jamaican culture as they live in secluded areas, holding onto ancient African traditions. Otherwise, some top notable spaces of interest might include Hero Circle, glistening waters with bioluminescent and organisms that light up. Windsor's Fire Spring, you can literally light it on fire. Sunken Pirate City, Floyd's Pelican Bar made of driftwood. Dolphin Cove, the Bob Marley Museum and Mausoleum. Dunn's River Falls, Reggae Beach, Cool Runnings Water Park, Mountain River Cave with Taino and Arawak paintings, Mystic Mountain Rainforest, Bob Sledding in Ochos Rios, Martha Bray River with wooden rafts, and Irie Blue Hole in Secret Falls. Yeah, I'm still kind of mind blown over that fire water and glowing lagoon place. That's just proof that Jamaica is thriving with magical natural wonders. Which brings us to... Jamaica may be small, but it is definitely loaded with natural treasures. First of all, Jamaica lies below the Cayman Trough on the Nicaragua Rise, an area in the Caribbean Sea that is elevated, giving Jamaica shallower waters and richer biodiversity. This also gives them the seventh largest natural harbor in the world, Kingston Harbor. The country is also about 146 miles long, 235 kilometers, and at its widest, only about 52 miles, 84 kilometers wide. Basically, Jamaica is made up of nice valleys and plains in the west and center, sometimes referred to as cockpit country, with a small mocho and dry harbor mountains in the center, and finally, the tallest range, the Blue Mountains, with the tallest peak, Blue Mountain Peak, in the east, starting around Kingston. The longest river being the Black River on the west side, and Wally Wash Pond being the largest body of water inland. Now, just like we studied in the Dominica episode, Jamaica is also home to natural mineral and hot springs, such as Blue Hole, Bubbling Springs, Milk River, Rockford Mineral Spa, and the Blue Lagoon. Not this one, this one. Although much of the island has been stripped for agriculture, wildlife is also quite prevalent, especially in the undisturbed forests in the north and Blue Mountains. Animals like bats, hutia, boar, and the indigenous 
indigenous Jamaican boa and freshwater Jamaican slider turtle can be found. Speaking of agriculture, Jamaica was primarily used by the colonists for sugar plantations. However, today all sorts of crops are grown, but most notably the ackee fruit, which actually tastes salty, not sweet. Ackee is used in the national dish ackee and salt fish. Otherwise, other notable Jamaican dishes might include rice and peas, jerk chicken, chicken foot soup, manish water, steamed kalaloo, and gizada. And I know what half of you are thinking. Yes, let's talk ganja. Yes, we all know it. Cannabis is pretty internationally recognized as a part of Jamaican culture. It was actually introduced from India by indentured servants from India, which is where the word ganja comes from. It's weird because for the longest time, growing marijuana and even possessing it was illegal, even though you can literally just find plants in the middle of the forests. It wasn't until 2015 that the country voted to decriminalize and amend strict laws. Today, you are allowed to have up to five plants legally, more if you have a cultivator's license. Possession up to two ounces or 56 grams is legal. And Rastafarians are allowed to use it for religious purposes. And the Rastafarians are a whole other story. Jamaica's people are few, but incredibly world-renowned and unique in so many ways. Looks like a great time to discuss that in... Jamaica lives by the motto, out of many, one people, attributing the unity to all the cultural pieces that have made them who they are today. First of all, the country has about three million people and is the third largest Anglophone nation in the Americas. The vast majority of Jamaicans identify as black at over 90%, about 7% are mixed, and the remainder are actually mostly made up of Asians, not whites, like the Chinese and Indian Jamaicans, with whites following after, mostly descended from British colonialists and other people groups following. And the coolest thing is they all speak in a Jamaican accent. Here's a white guy and a Chinese guy both born in Jamaica. Yeah. Um, we come from Jamaica. We come from the western part of Jamaica. Can't really tell you where we come from down there though because I don't know where we come from. I'm Jamaican. Well, if people don't believe me, them don't believe I come from Jamaica because I'm Chinese. Yeah, that was pretty cool, wasn't it? They use the Jamaican dollar as their currency, they use the type A, B, American style plug outlets, and they drive on the left side of the road. Now, even though they have a small population, Jamaica has probably made the biggest global impact for Caribbean culture out of all their neighbors. In the quickest way I can summarize their history, Tainos and Arawaks, Christopher Columbus comes in and calls it Santiago, slaves come in from Africa, Brits come in calling it Jamaica, slavery abolished in 1838. The Brits were like, dang, we need cheap labor since the slaves are free. Hmm, oh yeah, let's do the same thing we did with Guyana. Come on, Indians and Chinese. Finally, Jamaica gained independence in 1962. However, they still fall under the Commonwealth as a constitutional monarchy where Queen Elizabeth still remains the technical head of state, but nobody really sees her as like the head head of state. Now, due to Jamaica's relative isolation from the rest of the Antilles, Jamaica had to kind of develop their own unique style of customs and traditions. For one, Christianity has played a huge role in Jamaica. Jamaica. Jamaica also has more churches per square kilometer than anywhere else in the world. Contrary to popular belief, Rastafarianism, although started in Jamaica in the 1930s, only makes a small minority of somewhere around 5% of the population. If you don't know anything about Rastafarianism, basically it's an Afrocentric belief system that takes inspiration from the Christian Bible as certain rituals and doctrines like the one we discussed in the Ethiopia episode in which they believe that Haile Selassie was the Messiah, yada yada yada. If you're interested in learning it, just Google it. I wish it was that easy. I wish I could just do that for every episode. Just Google it. Jamaica. Done. Second, we all know the biggest source of global influence for Jamaica would be, no doubt, the music. Starting in the 50s, Jamaica's ska and rock steady precursors to the 60s reggae and dancehall melodies not only became super popular in themselves, but also paved the way for other branch genres like hip hop and EDM. In order to really appreciate Jamaican music though, it might be wise to brush up on the part I personally find most fascinating, patois. Now, although in a legal sense, the official language of Jamaica is standard Jamaican English or SJE, many will say that technically there are two languages, the other being Jamaican patois, which is basically like an English Creole, much like what Haiti did with French. The thing is, Jamaican Patois is kind of like a loose, feel it as you go type of language. It doesn't have an official standardized format, but there are certainly universally used words, such as Talawa, Crosses, Pitney, Dopi, Big Up, and of course, everyone knows the classics Wagwan and Airi. However, when they want to emphasize something, they like repeat a word twice, like Pasa Pasa, Liki Liki, Picky Picky, and they always use like filler words which don't have any meaning, but it kind of illustrates the story better. For example, okay, Jamaican geography Darren wrote this, and I'm gonna try to see if I could do it. So me go so bops and run a race, then me go err and run hard, and me go rups, rups, flick, flick, and me win it easily. I don't know how I did. That was either incredibly offensive or kind of acceptable. Oh, and if you make a Jamaican friend, chances are you will get a nickname. And it's usually based off of anything they notice from you. Yo, man, what your name? Uh, Keith. Nah, man, you like the broom, your name broomy. You eat the cupcake, your name Munchie. You're raising three daughters in a house in San Francisco. Me go and call you Bob Saget. Like that! Anyway, we could go on explaining more about the various festivals, traditions, dances, or how they are the only Caribbean nation with an active 
native hockey team, even though all the players are like literally Canadian nationals, but that'll take too long. For what it's worth, some notable people of Jamaican descent might include Michael Lee Chin, Dr. Thomas P. Lecky, Oliver Samuel, Sprinters Usain Bolt, Shelly Ann Fraser Price, and Asafa Powell, Merlin Oti, Dustin Brown, Jimmy Cliff, Ziggy Marley, Shaggy, Mona Hammond, Grace Jones, Sonia Richards Ross, Mary Seacole, Damian Marley, Sean Kingston, Portia Simpson Miller, Marcus Garvey, Naomi Campbell, Notorious B.I.G., Patrick Ewing, Louise Simone Bennett, and the most iconic Jamaican maybe of all time, the master himself, Robert Bob Nesta Marley. All right, now we gotta move on and see who else likes to dance the reggae beat with Jamaica. If you ask a Jamaican what Jamaicans are best at, they'll probably say something like knowing how to slow down and take it easy when life needs to. Therefore, it's not hard for other countries to like Jamaica. First of all, Jamaica has close ties to Cuba as they have been giving scholarships and medical help for decades. Treaties and business deals have always been active. They have a funny little rivalry with Trinidad and Tobago and Barbados though when it comes to dominating the tourism industry and sports competitions. But when they meet up as people, it's like they're brothers all over again. China keeps an eye on them considering that they already have a noticeable Chinese minority. By the way, Tess Ann Chin who won The Voice in the US was like a huge deal, and they have been investing like crazy for the past few decades. Jamaicans see this as kind of like a suspiciously nice gesture because they like the business, but they don't want to be taken over by excessive debt. Also, like mentioned in the Ethiopia episode, Jamaicans love Ethiopia, especially Rastafarians. In terms of their best friends though, the Jamaicans I've talked to have said most likely their fellow Anglophone nations, the USA, Canada, and the UK. These areas have the largest Jamaican diaspora communities, and remittance money makes a huge part of their economy. Visa-free entry is allowed for each nation, and each country places Jamaica high on tourism and publicity, which in return gives them huge global popularity. In conclusion, Jamaica is like the little island that could and music was its fuel. People all around the world now put this tiny landmass in high regard, all because they have that certain Talawa charm, but with a laid back life that everyone admires. Stay tuned, Japan is coming up next.